another episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Oh, three hours. <laughs> Jess, we did it. We did it. And it actually wasn't that painful. You know we what? both enjoyed it. That was a great, great season finale. It was. It was Dare I say, like, the best season finale we've ever recapped? It was unexpected, even though I knew what was coming. I mean, Pete's was wild. Pete's was... Okay. But that was also... That's different. That was also, like, I had an ulcer right, after. Right. Like, like the hernia was popping, like, after I Pete's. needed therapy. I needed a lot of therapy. Yeah. Like, I was calling Talkspace yeah. immediately. <laughs> this was, like, oh, my God, so much love, so much awkwardness, so much stress. So much heartbreak. So much heartbreak. Oh, my God, the heartbreak of it all so i would say it was like the best in the classic sense of the bachelor honestly of like yes it gave us immaculate classic bachelor ending Mm -hmm. and you know what i feel good because i felt like we were saying that midway through the season we were like we feel like this finale is going to be really really good it actually was not immaculate finale because in an um, in in an (laughs) immaculate finale brandon would be our bachelor broad's Becca and I, the amount of times we were like yelling about the fact that Brandon was not The Bachelor. Now, granted, we talked about the fact that the turnaround for the filming was so soon that perhaps Brandon was still too heartbroken. It might have been much. I mean, dude, this after the final rose, The Bachelor has been long and filmed at this point. Yes, yes. So they they did it like right afterwards. So a lot. There's a chance that Brandon was just like too hurt, but he would have been such a good Bachelor. And he like killed the live portion Mm. um, of after the final rose. Like he's great on camera. Now we'll get to the Clayton portion later because I, you know, I don't want to go too heavy handed um, about uh, hating on Clayton because I just felt horrible for him because of what the producers did to him. Yeah. The true traumatizing. The, I think they've, I mean, they've never even gotten close to doing that. Should we just talk about that. Clayton right now? Sure, why not? Before we talk about Clayton, can, yeah. we, uh, can we take a quick pause? Because yeah. listen, now that we're wrapping Michelle's season, some of these guys, you know, like Brandon, did not find the love on reality TV. So... Might we suggest Matches dating app? Oh, okay. We do know a lot of broads and other friends in our personal lives who have found a great partner on the Match app. So if you're looking to feel that romance at the top of this new year, look no further than the Match dating app. They streamline that love for you. You know, if I was single right now, I'd be all cozy by the fire, scrolling, looking for a person (laughs) who loves honest and open communication and whose bedroom fantasy includes getting eight solid hours of sleep. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Okay. And I'm sure you can find that on the Match app. I'm sure you can. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. But are you guys ready for something new? Because if you know what you want and you're not afraid to say it, download Match. And now messaging your top matches is free. Download the Match dating app. Um, So Clayton... Becca, have they ever done anything remotely like that to a lead ever? A- except oh, for like after, uh, during a finale where the lead did something shitty like Juan Pablo. Like, have they ever you're shamed? T- you're talking when they, about when they psychologically tortured him and publicly humiliated him. Uh, you, I, I'm referring to uh, the moment when he already had uh, seen all of the Instagram comments about everyone just despising, despising him. Which, again, oh, hello. I mean, we all... None of us wanted Clayton to be The Bachelor. I'm sorry. Like, I wasn't a Clayton fan, not because I didn't even like him, because I did not know him. Also, wasn't giving us a lot, right? And it was like, there are so many better options. But they make him read these horrific tweets out loud and not even like cute kind of cheeky tweets about him. Like tweets about his appearance. The, when they started what? like saying that he was gonna have like sh- babies that look like Shrek, I'm, I'm like, like, where did where did you find that? Also, this man is like not conventionally ugly. This man is. <laughs> I think people normally say conventionally attractive. <laughs> this man is not conventionally ugly. Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is a good looking guy. Okay, everybody on these sh- they're like Shrek. Hot. What? I couldn't believe it. But but okay, so abroad sent this, and I think that they're on to something. Mm-hmm. They said. I think that this was actually producer strategy because I was not rooting for him, but now I feel so bad for him Uh 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 that I am 
cheering him on. I felt like entering he, into a season. I felt like you and I. Oh, it worked. That on was us. our story. We were. We were like, oh god. Here I comes literally Clayton. like folded my arms and I'm like, he's the underdog that I am rooting for now. I'm like, how dare they speak about our Clayton yeah. this way? Clayton, our Clayton, our Clayton. They really did that. I mean. These producers are like, we're not going to be able to convince these people in 10 minutes to root for this guy unless we torment him. Yeah, Mm -hmm. It was horrible, but it did, did, you know. I think it was effective. But, you know, as we talked about, he seems like an earnest guy. This is the thing. And this is what we always said about Clayton is we never had a problem with Clayton. No. He was in his conversations with Michelle. He always seemed lovely. He seemed lovely with the other guys. He just talked a lot about wishing that he had the same confidence that Michelle did. So that was kind of the only conversation we got from him. And we were just like, why Clayton? He's like, I love my family. Don't you love your family? Yeah. And so we were irritated at, hey, we were irritated at production Mm -hmm. for choosing Clayton, Mm -hmm. not irritated at this man who we really know nothing of. And poor Clayton is getting the harassment. Like it's his fault. Like, of course he's going to say, yes, I'll be The Bachelor. When producers ask him, he's like, me? I was barely on the, me? All right, sure. Why Why not? not? Yolo. (laughs) Terrible. He's like, 2022 is really going to be my year. You just saw like his sad (laughs) smile. He's just like, yeah, no, I've read it all. (laughs) Caitlin's like, don't, don't, don't Don't do do that. that. Don't, don't do that. I just, I do have to give this man some serious props. He, He handled it so well. He did. I would have been weeping, like publicly weeping. Also, how do you just not have a look on your face where you're just like, he like, like y'all set me up for this, you bitches. Yeah, like what? Are you seriously, you're gonna do this to me after tormenting me during the filming of my season? Now this is my first like live moment. Unbelievable. Also, what I said when we were watching it is, I'm like, it's different on Jimmy Kimmel when celebrities are reading it because yes. they're celebrities with fame and fortune. Yeah, <laughs> Clayton has none of that right now. Nothing but haters. Literally, not a single fan out there except for me now. <sighs> Production. <laughs> <laughs> Production really owes that man a house after his season is done. I am dying to know how much they gave those two for a down payment. Absolutely dying. Michelle, Nate, one of you, please tell us. Slide into our DMs. We are itching with curiosity. What if they give him like a fifty thousand dollar check or something? That would be wild. But I wonder how much she got paid for her season. I don't know. How much do you know how much leads are normally paid? Oh my god. Apparently the supposedly, I mean, this is on on the in the little tabloid articles I've Googled before. Supposedly Emily Maynard was one of the top paid ones ever or something. Really? Yeah. And she got paid like two hundred and fifty K or something like that. Okay. Supposedly. Two. Supposedly. But I think is it like normally like a hundred thousand. I think it's like one twenty, one fifty, something okay. like that. But uh, I, I can tell you what, Dancing with the Stars, they made a hell of a lot more on that show. Yeah. I know firsthand. You're making like over 300K probably. Wow. I know. Well, it depends on how far you get in the season. Now, but yeah, that's an an astronomical amount of money. Yeah. Now, I will say Dancing with the Stars, the amount of work that that takes blows my, like baffles mm-hmm. me every time. Whenever I would just watch like moments of their rehearsals, I'm just like, I don't even, I can't even understand I also can't dance, so the idea of like having to get to that point oh, yeah. is just mind blowing. But to they me. like put you up in a nice apartment, you get everything yeah. paid for, all that. In fact, I think I remember Joe saying that production told him like, "Oh no, we we treat you right. This isn't The Bachelor. Like <laughs> <laughs> we He's take like, care of our talent the bachelor here, and I'll go straight to Dancing with the Stars. I guess because there's you know there's real stars on that show. That's true." You know, like Carol Baskin or whatever. Yeah. Real A-list celebs like Carol Baskin. Do you remember, though, when Lisa Rinna was on that show like years and years (laughs) ago? Yeah. My family, we called her like something referencing her lips. We didn't know who she was. We're Mm -hmm. like, who is this woman with these massive lips? Ah, yes. Lisa Rinna's lips. Love her. I <laughs> love her. Anyway, okay. Getting a little off track with the reality TV. However. Yeah. So, um. We had a live and finale. Your looks so good. Thank you. By so the much. way, Thank you. quick update. That. Can you give us a quick? Yeah, quick broads. Update? If you didn't know, I um I did get my lip filler dissolved um because it was migrating and they were bigger than I intended them. I they weren't what I in, always envisioned. I liked them though. Thanks. I mean, it was like a, it was a thing, right? Yeah. But it was just like, all right, I'm done. Isn't I, that so fun that we can do that? <laughs> 
I'm, I'm like done with having huge <laughs> lips. So I'm, I'm ready to mutate my face <laughs> once again. Um, but no, I'm like I wanted to have them a little smaller and more natural looking. So shout out to Bahari at Rivkin who gave me exactly what I asked for. Um, my dad has decided he wants to get Botox because he feels like his eyelids yes. are like falling down and his eyebrows. And he's yes. like, no, I'll get it. So maybe I should have him come to LA and I'll, we'll go to them and document it. That would be so good. I'm telling you, like, I, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I would marry all of them and move in. These people, like I was in there and they were, there was like four of them. One person was like massaging my shoulders. And oh I was like, what God. is happening right now? And they're like, we can give you any, like we can make sure there's no pain. And I'm like, you don't have to give me, they're like, we can give you like nitrous if you need it. And I was like, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like, I'm like, like I just got mm, a just whole a little bit. <laughs> like, can you be my dentist? Uh, because they don't offer Are they, that. They were offering you nitrous for the injection? Yeah. Anything they're like, just as they're long like, as you're comfortable. This is a medical spa. Yeah. They're honey. like, as long as you're comfortable. She took her, she took so much time just like making sure it was perfectly like done exactly how I wanted and then they were so sweet they were like they gave me like a stocking full of like facial goodies wow I love them wow five star I'm, I'm like I'm not leaving this place that's for sure I'm not going back home <laughs> to that dumpster <laughs> you're just sitting in the waiting room with your glass just like I'm like <laughs> I'm not leaving and Dr. Rivkin who's like the head of it he makes some fire tiktok content love we love that love so yeah we definitely should do that with your dad um how just sorry we need another update before, because we're heading into the holidays so yeah, we're not gonna true. record again so i just need quick medical updates yes how's your the hole in your the back of your mouth doing it's doing much better is it Thank is you. it kind of yes. healed now yes it's not been i'm not in pain anymore I'm you don't still have to having, go to have them pack it nope nope i'm done and i'm having to <sighs> you know I'm, I'm still having to like do my little treatments at nighttime <sighs> but in general i'm not in pain That's we huge. are good uh is my whistling a little like i can do a little more like better than I could because there's a hole back there but has it not closed up will it ever I, I mean it's closed a little bit but like I have a missing tooth that I need to wait like six months to get an implant for you need an implant for it so you can eat or something or yeah it's like a main molar <laughs> yeah it's rough it's pretty brutal Luckily, anyway, it's far back <laughs> enough that people don't see it when I speak um but broads you might get a wait, good look at it go oh, I'll say ah oh, real quick I just want to see oh shit yeah Oh, yeah. If I do a big laugh on the YouTube, like throw my head back, you might be able to catch a nice screenshot of that. <laughs> and you're fully Go healed. Ahead and try it. You're fully healed. The oh, mouth. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just like rubbing my, I'm rubbing my lips just like all over the mic. Yeah, that feels like years ago. Do you ever have something? Well, is it ever just like your mouth where you're like, wow, like three weeks ago, I was in so much misery oh and gosh. now it just feels like a dream a I, distant nightmare i truly i like every day i wake up and i'm like god bless us everyone <laughs> <laughs> like not just like just tapped out with pain meds or just in tons of pain i'm like oh my gosh we are good we are out here like oh, isn't it, it so, so crazy good. how you like kind of forget the pain though you know like yeah. you try to conceptualize it and you're like oh, it makes you just the past. appreciate like you're, we're moments. just living in the moment yeah. we have a new lease on life <laughs> we really do and for that we're grateful Merry Christmas, everyone. God bless us. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. Yes, and happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you broads. Oh, happy holidays. It's going to be uh, Christmas in a couple days. Hey, do you have any... Okay, sorry, guys. I'm really deviating from the bachelor, <laughs> but just got to ask. Mm -hmm. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Because we're not talking about this yet. I'm not going to see you again until... What's, when's our next well, episode? Wait, January 6th? January. Okay, well, so... Well, that's not... Yeah. So, broads, here's, here's the game plan. Uh, so we have this episode and then we are taking like a little week and a half break uh, to be with our families. But we will episodes will still be coming out and we're going to be putting out some of our favorite episodes. Yeah. Especially maybe ones that might have gotten overlooked, like ones that were like, hey, maybe you didn't listen to this and you should have because yeah. it's one of our favorites. Uh, we'll be putting those out uh, next Tuesday and Thursday and then Tuesday. And then we will have an episode on Thursday, January 6th. Um, and we will be talking about our big news at the end of the episode. I think a couple, yeah. I'll tell you after. Okay. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Um, you're going to leave me in suspense. No, I was going to say, I think maybe we should, we should release, um, our relationship episodes. We really, we recorded those so early on and it would be kind of fun to reshare both of those. There's probably a lot of broads that haven't heard those. That would be fun. Broads, let us know. 
do you want us to release um, our like original relationship episodes like Becca and Gray and mine and Evan's stories? We interviewed each other. Or would you like us to re-release our favorite, yeah. our personal favorite yeah, yeah. episodes from this past year? Let us know in the let Instagram post comments. By the way, when we say in the episode, like, which I'm the only one who says it, let us know in the comments. <laughs> I actually do mean the Instagram post comments because I will go and look on the Instagram post to see mm-hmm. if anyone like commented anything. And then I get a little disappointed when no one does. So, you know, <laughs> you break her heart a little bit. <laughs> Speaking of the Instagram time. comments. Yeah. You let me know because I hadn't seen them. You let me know that some people, because you're obviously a Brandon Stan, that some people were saying that they sided with me on not being a Brandon Stan. And I that like, seems like what was insinuated. Like, I, oh, I'm team Jess on this one. I would like to make something very clear. I have been, a, and if you go back and listen to the episodes for the past like five or six weeks, I am a People huge fan. People hear what they want to hear. I am a huge fan of Brandon. I, I love him. In fact, I may be in love with him now. I just always thought she was going to pick Nate. Yeah. And I, I also always <sighs> wanted to talk about, I felt like they were giving Nate kind of a shitty edit. Um, and I wanted to like say, these are my thoughts about maybe why he... Like, I don't know, when they were doing the whole narrative of, like, he's never been in love before, and da-da-da, and I'm like, well, that's okay if someone's never been in love with before. Like, you don't have to, you know, hinge everything on that. And, by the way, we did get a little moment where Brandon, when he was um, with Neil Lane uh, choosing a ring, and he said, I I thought I had been in love, but I guess I hadn't. So both of the guys had never been in love before, but, you know. But I love Brandon. Are you kidding me? love that man oh, we're gonna get more more into that tonight for sure yeah um yeah i don't think nate, i didn't feel like nate got a bad edit until this episode in the last one. and then bad is it, maybe a bit dramatic but yeah. you gotta it, it like it was he he had a good edit for like the first like two-thirds of the season and then i think it was you're right bad edits dramatic There was no drama because all the men were in love with Michelle. So they had to find one guy that they could maybe, I think, hinge certain things on on and be like, maybe he's not as in love with her and da, da, da. And they focused, I think, on Nate because he wasn't as communicative about his feelings as Brandon is because maybe he wasn't writing the most beautiful love letters I've ever heard in my life. Don't get us started. Do not even get do not even get me started. And also the other thing, people talking about Brandon being clingy. Okay. It was very it's it's upsetting to me. Stage five clinger, (laughs) needy. Listen. Love bombing. Don't get me started on the love bombing thing. I'll actually get upset about it. I listen. Brandon does not have to be everyone's cup of tea. No, if you don't want to date him, if it's too much for you, get yeah, it. Yeah, totally get it. But in general, we we watch these romantic movies, right? And we go, oh my God, I wish that that he would would say all those things to me and that he would communicate like that and that we could have like our notebook moments. And I'm like, this is the real life version of it. Except not toxic. Except not toxic. Because yeah, I always forget how toxic the notebook is. He... I am already <laughs> wanting to jump to the end of because some of his, some of his quotes. I personally never saw any red flags in his affection for Michelle at all. No, no, I didn't either. It That's didn't why when f- I was seeing the, some of the stuff that people were talking about online, I was like, "Really?" It like, didn't feel unhealthy. It didn't feel like it was self serving. It didn't feel like it, it, it was insecure. It didn't feel like any of those things. No, and I think that was made very clear when she broke up with him. Um, his yes. response. Yes, his response. Even his, he could have low key if he wanted to be petty. He could have been petty after the final rose. No, kept it super respectful. Super classy, even though you could tell that he was going through a lot of emotions. Of course he's hurt. And he has every right to feel hurt. Yeah. But he handled it so incredibly. The fact that, like, even in After the Final Rose, when Caitlin was like, do you still, are you still in love with Michelle? And he was like, I meant what I said, but I just feel like maybe now, because of her relationship, it's not respectful for me to to go there. And I'm like, wow, 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 wow. He could have had his moment where he was like, yeah. And it would have been fine if he had that moment. I would have I would have been like, I see you, Brandon, if he just would have been like, oh, man, I'm just still so in love with her and I'm so devastated. 
Or he could have done the whole like, you said you were in love with me. Like, how mm-hmm. could you have said that? And blah, blah, blah. But he didn't do any of that. He was no, like, he didn't. anyway, we'll get more into that. But all that being said, don't <laughs> slander him. Enough of the Brandon slander. Stop saying anything. You're just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you're just jealous <laughs> that he's in love with us and not in love with you because I know he's in love with he's me I glass. could feel it when I looked into his eyes while I was watching that episode I knew he was in love with me I knew that that letter was to me not Michelle sorry Michelle Brandon's mine <laughs> anywho should we take a quick pause let's take a quick pause and get a word from our sponsors <laughs> <laughs> freak out before I flip a damn table. Okay. <laughs> anyway, word from Pendulum. Yes, broads. Uh, we are starting a new year, so let's talk health for a second, okay? Research increasingly shows that one of the most crucial factors to having a healthy life is actually having a healthy gut microbiome. Um, if you suffer if you suffer from type 2 diabetes or know someone who does, this is extra important. It could be a lot to keep straight. We get it. That's why we want to tell you about Pendulum. Pendulum glucose control is the the first and the only medical probiotic clinically shown to help manage type 2 diabetes when taken with medication. And in the past, a lot of the direction has been that if you just eat healthy and exercise, you can control di- type 2 diabetes. But it turns out that without a healthy gut, you might not see the results that you want. I am all about gut health. But with Pendulum, you can lower your after meal blood glucose levels easily, which helps manage type 2 diabetes. And again, it's a lot to keep straight and science constantly changes. So it can be tough to keep up with everything. But that's what's so cool about Pendulum. Pendulum, uh, their team of doctors and innovators are doing groundbreaking work and have been able to isolate the unique strains of beneficial gut bacteria that can be so beneficial in managing blood sugar. Uh, it's such a huge development in changing the way that diabetes has been talked about and managed for years. If you or someone you love has type 2 diabetes, take control of glucose levels with Pendulum Glucose Control. Use code chatty at pendulumlife.com to get 20% off all the products. So that's Pendulum. P-E-N-D-U-L-U-M life.com promo code chatty for 20% off. Broads, my leggings are working overtime this holiday season. Sure, they're meant for working out, but then working out turns into, oh, shoot, I need to hop on the Zoom call and then I need to wrap those gifts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so Lord knows I need a pair that not uh, that are not only functional, but cute and can work for whatever I need them for, which is why I pretty much only wear Girlfriend Collective. When I tell you I'm obsessed with Girlfriend Collective, they are my favorite. Hands down. Girlfriend Collective makes some of the best active wear on the market, people. It's sustainable, ethically made. It's for everyone. Let's talk sizing. The Girlfriend Collective is for everybody every day, which means all of their clothing comes in a range of sizes from extra, extra small to 6XL. Next, they're also functional. We are talking squat proof. We are talking equipped with pockets, different levels of support for whatever kind of day you have planned and a variety of styles depending on what you like best for your body. Seriously, out of all the activewear I've tried, Girlfriend Collective is by far my favorite. It's lasted the longest. I feel the most supported in it. And cherry on top, it's made out of recycled materials like plastic water bottles that would otherwise end up in a landfill. Uh, Also, personal note, of all the activewear I have, uh, Girlfriend Collective pieces are um, definitely the piece that I get the most complimented on. So that's fun. For listeners of the show, Girlfriend Collective is offering $25 off your purchase of $100 or more when you go to girlfriend.com slash chatty. So that's 25 bucks off $100 or more when you go to girlfriend.com slash chatty. That's girlfriend.com slash chatty. Um, okay. So, I mean, so we basically start off this episode, first of all, with Caitlin being alone. This is our oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. our back live the, back show. The studio. So Tasha has been exposed to COVID, and last minute, Caitlin has to do this all by herself. And I saw her post about how nervous she was. And before the show started, I was like, Becca, the level I would have been puking in the back. The level of nervous, like already live, is wild. Also, like, when do you think they found out that Tasha got exposed? Like, what kind of rehearsals had they been going through with the two of them? Yes, yes. And I'm trying to think, I don't think that they've done anything live. This is the first live one. It's all been pre-recorded. Oh. So it's like when you, if you make a mistake, you can edit it, whatever. Like this is live, live TV. I would have been absolutely They didn't have shaking. a live one for Katie and Blake, no? No, I think it was recorded a couple days before. Shit. Yeah. So I think this was, I, I 
could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was the first live one that they've had since the COVID times. And Brandon dropped an F bomb. And he dropped an F bomb. They're gonna hear ABC's gonna hear about that one from the FT FTC. No, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, you know they find they find them like ten thousand bucks or like twenty thousand bucks if like some something. I mean, might be more actually. At because because of that F bomb, they took away Nate and Michelle's house check. They actually took <laughs> they're away. They're like, actually, that's gonna be a no. They actually took away Clayton's season. They're like, <laughs> yep, that preview. It was a great season, and we are moving in a new direction. That preview looked really good, by the way. I have to admit. I, we were, you know, we were talking a lot it, of shit, guys, but then I was we like, were, damn, <laughs> okay, it looks very good. I, looks very I, good. I, you know, you know, I've been holding out hope. I go, I think that I, I think, know, and I, I hadn't. think this is going to be fun. I think it's going to be, you know, I, I thought it was good. I, I felt like it was going to be fun. It looks like it's going to be a wild I feel like season. it was going to be fun because there's no pressure. We have no, we have zero expectations for the lead. Let's be real. That's very true. We, the bar is low. Bar so is anything low. is going to blow a, blow our socks you off. You know what? That actually might be good for a lead. Right? That's what I'm be saying. Like, I don't have to, I don't have this like thing to live up to where I'm scared I'm that I'm going to disappoint anyone. Yeah. I've already disappointed them enough. You know, can't get any lower than this. <gasps> oh my God. It's a good place to shh. <laughs> You know, just start there. It's only up from there. Um. So, okay. So, sorry, I interrupted you. Not uh, only that, but let's just talk about real quick how the audience started out with any masks, and then she had to make an announcement, and they, oh, they, they masked up the audience within like twenty minutes because Twitter was going off. This is live live television. I don't think I've ever seen this happen on live TV before, where like there was production reaction, and they're addressing that there is like a buzz on the internet and then responding and addressing it. This is the beginning of a new era of live television. Because they pulled that tweet from that night on when they were doing the reads for Clayton. Yep. This is the beginning of a new era where Twitter, you respond and live television will react. I'm sure they will do that. Like even just think with the leads, like I'm sure they'll be like, they they could have been like, Michelle, you know, a lot of people are saying on the internet right now that it was really unfair that you did blah, blah, blah to Brandon. That's you know, actually like, pretty cool. It is cool. Because I would I would feel happy about that if I was a lead or someone on the show, because then I'd be like, great, an opportunity. I, can, I, I have an opportunity to address this publicly. And it's not like, oh, shit, I wasn't able to address yeah. that. Now, do I want to go back on and talk my about Instagram that and like, make something. it a whole thing? Yeah, yeah. That'll be interesting. I, wow. I could see it going in that direction for sure, which I think is good. Keeps it fresh. Keeps it. I wonder if I'm like, exciting. I'm trying to think of like now show ideas that have like li- like that could be get like that could come from live Twitter react. Oh, that's interesting. That sounds like a hellhole of a show. Like a reality game show. Well, they, that, I mean, remember when they started incorporating calling in? That yeah. that was like the first time mm-hmm. that, w- that was a big But thing. then when you're having like the masses respond. The future. The, the future the metaverse <laughs> um so anyway that yes, was interesting that was wild um okay, <sighs> okay. so we start hmm, off back in mexico with the biggest love fest we've ever seen on our screens for a uh meet the parents we've never moment. seen anything oh Han- not quite that dramatic but hannah ann with uh <sighs> with uh sweet nums uh, an angel. How could I forget? <laughs> She's an angel. Wasn't it something like how that? How could I forget? Yes. That just yes. popped into my head. I had blocked that out. Wow. Oh my goodness. So had I. Wow. Wasn't she? Yeah. She yes. was crying. Over she like, was. Please. She was weeping about Hannah Ann being an angel, and it was so awkward because she couldn't stand Maddie because she didn't meet Maddie. Yeah. They had met Hannah. No, she had met Maddie at. She had met Maddie at their yes, vow renewal. The first time. But then she didn't come in because her and Peter were outside, right? Is that what happened? That was when they met later on. But they had met at the vow renewal ceremony and she liked yes, her at first. Yes, yes, And then, yeah, they were outside for sitting outside for like three hours or whatever. And then she didn't like her. But And then anyway. she came in and they were like, we've been waiting for three hours. Yes, I yes, still yes, kind of so feel like upset. Hannah Ann would be perfect for that family. You never know. You never, you never know with happened. Pilot Pete. I, Hannah Ann has thrown a lot of shade ab- about Peter uh, on the it's internet, kind of, well, understandably well, so. Well, and you know, um, hate is not the opposite of love. Mm, it's very true. The opposite of love is, I can't remember what the quote is. Basically, when you don't care about someone. Apathy. Apathy. That's, not, that's what it, no, is that's that what, what it is. is. It's like mm-hmm. the opposite of not, love is not hate, it's apathy. I don't think of you. Yeah, Ooh, you, well, are not, you are irrelevant. I don't even think of darling. you. Darling. Mm. Mm. But you know who is not irrelevant in Michelle's parents' hearts is Brandon. 
Brandon. He's the apple of their eye. He is the apple of their eye. They, they met him before and they loved him. And wow, had they been thinking about him? They, oh, they've been talking about him nonstop. <laughs> nonstop, nonstop. They called all the family, uh, let them know that they found their future son in law. They've been staying up late at night, like in bed, Pillow you know, talk. about Brandon. <laughs> Just like, and you could even tell when they met Nate, they were both using terminology like Brandon was just much warmer. Yes, both the both the mom and the dad. They've, they've like, already they've been talked about how warm Brandon was. Yes. You know, yeah, they're sitting on their pillows. They're like, remember the time when Brandon was in the jacuzzi and he was wearing your board shorts? <laughs> oh my god! Remember the He's time? Like wearing them. <laughs> In bed. Dad's wearing them. It's crazy because I have them on right now. Oh my god, you're so funny. <laughs> Did you plan that? Oh, Brandon. They were. He walked into the room. Their eyes lit up. They were so obsessed with him. Becca and I were like, they said we would have gladly. Uh, they said we would gladly adopt you into our family. Welcome. His Welcome par- his to our family. Were like, well, you can't adopt him because <laughs> he's our son. He's our son. No, they were. When Brandon sat down with Michelle's dad, he was like giggling. Like he was he was lit up because of Brandon. And then of course Brandon gives always the perfect answer. He's like uh Michelle's dad's like, "Hey, jealousy." Yeah. When you have a woman who yeah. is a powerful woman and wants to accomplish all these things, like, let's talk about jealousy. And Brandon's like, "Well, I come up from a home where my mom is a powerful woman and I'm excited about that with Michelle and <laughs> The dad is literally beaming. I wrote down, I'm like, dad and mom have a crush on Brandon. Yeah, they're obsessed. They're obsessed with him. We didn't never saw that scene, though, of like, wasn't there a scene of him telling Michelle, like, I'm worried he would be jealous? I think the editing okay. was done where um, the dad was saying to Brandon, I'm worried that someone could have uh, jealous tendencies because of you that know, what she wants to accomplish sense. with her life. And he was sitting in that exact direction. They edited it. Uh, that, it that makes way. sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, what we didn't talk about, though, which to me I noticed almost immediately was that Michelle seemed her spirit was downtrodden from the beginning of this episode. Her <sighs> energy was off it was off and you and i were like both looking at each other and we were like is it joe Joe?" or and now i assume that it is uh the reason being is that she she did like like she said she was in love with both of them but i think she knew that nate was the one and she was probably feeling torn up because brandon has expressed his love so much and feeling nervous that Nate wasn't quite there. That's still such a move, though, for her then to say to Brandon that night that she loved him. It must have been enough. Yeah. Like she's, yeah. She must have been in love with both of them enough. And like right. she said uh, in After the Final Rose, where she was like, I I needed to tell you because it had been weighing on me. Um because I was too nervous to say it initially because of backlash. Because yeah. people are so weird. Which, yeah. by the way, is always such a strange thing to me about Bachelor Nation. That, like, people get upset about or, like, get all in a tizzy about m- people saying I love you to multiple people. Oh my God, it was it was such a thing on Ben season. I know. I'm like, do we know? Th- do we understand the premise of this show? Also, like, yeah. And then what's the alternative? You just not saying that you love them and yeah. just hiding it? It's weird. And also, I believe in different types of love. Also, you might not know who you... I don't know. I guess you could just keep it all... That's the, that's their individual choice. They can tell whoever right. the fuck they want that they love them. And that was kind of a thing. I know now I'm going off about Nate, but that was kind of a thing that I felt with Nate when it came to like editing and the way that they pushed him. I do feel like Nate was very in love with Michelle. Um, and obviously, they're in love and together and all that. But I just feel like he is one of those people who doesn't use that term and maybe feels those things. And when like someone who would feel those things and otherwise a different person would use the term in love, but he's maybe not going to say the word in love or the phrase in love. Do you know what I mean? I think some people use it more freely. Whenever people say that though, they're like, uh, which he did end up saying it. Yeah. But some people are like really, like they're like, oh, I don't want to say it. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, no, I know. There's get there's... some help. <laughs> <laughs> you need to work past something. If it, but if like it... I told you, I was like, I was like child of divorce, and I get that. I felt like he honestly, I felt like he moved past a lot of blockages 
though. Like he really in, did. on this episode. I mean, I wasn't was I blown away? No. But I was satisfied. But also we're comparing it to we are comparing it to Romeo, Romeo to, to to someone who has never expressed themselves like that on the bachelor stage. Never. I can't recall. I can't think of anyone who has spoken the way Brandon spoke. Why is he not the goddamn bachelor? <laughs> I don't know. Anywho, um, yeah, it was, but like you said, so her spirit seemed... Her spirit seemed off. Off. And it also seemed off in their night date, and then it was just different with Nate. So I thought it was at first Joe, but then you just saw, you saw a difference between her, with, with her and Brandon, and with her and Nate. It was obvious to me. Yeah, and it was, I mean, she was even saying, like, she was talking to her mom after Brandon, and she was like, I know Brandon would do absolutely anything for me, but it didn't feel like... <sighs> That excited her. It was kind of more like a fact. Like, I know he'll do anything for me. Oh my God, some of the parents' quotes. Her mom was telling Brandon, I can see it in your eyes, you know, that you love her. I'm like, oh my God, you guys are really invested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and then she she goes back and tells Michelle that he has he had really won her heart. Oh yeah. Well she also like, So this is about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay, so she'd also told Brandon she was crying and she's like, I know that there's someone else here, but like, basically we want you in the family. Oh yeah. Like screw whoever is coming oh, next. Yeah. <laughs> like no one can beat you. It was an interesting dynamic that you and I were watching because obviously it's like, listen, I get it. When you are a parent and you see someone walk in who is so clearly in love with your child and is so, and Brandon is, he's so warm and his smiley and kind. And you're like, this is it. And it reminds, like they kept saying, her dad was like, he reminds me of me. And her mom was like, it's I like want us. What, I want you to have what we have. Yeah. So there must have been this memory there where like you want that for your child. But sometimes what's good for you isn't what's best for your child. Yeah. I felt like the problem was to me. And I won't over criticize because I'm not in their shoes. But what I noticed was that I felt like they weren't uh, paying attention to her. They were more paying attention to the guys. Mm. So, but I think they should have directed their focus a little bit more. And to, instead of focusing so much on reading the guys, they should have focused more yeah. on reading their daughter. Yeah, like you seem off. Is everything okay? <laughs> Granted, I mean, I think that um, maybe for them it's kind of hard though, where they're like in there you, you know when you have a family member and you have a whole narrative of who they are and sometimes it's hard to shift outside of that narrative yeah. of for them having her having been in an abusive relationship their thought is probably like don't worry about this honey we got this we're yeah. gonna figure out the guy that yeah. is the best for you um and they maybe didn't trust her judgment a lot in that situation yeah i can't say even that aside that i would have acted much different i'm like maybe i would have but I don't know. How do you think you would have handled it? If you really liked one guy. I probably would have been just like that. I know. I think I would have like, too. I would think. I wonder if I would be thinking uh, strategically and be like, okay, if I. Because we talked about this <laughs> when like, we were watching. If I make too big of a deal about the one that I really like, then maybe I'm going to push my kid into the arms of the one that I'm not into. I've raised a young child. Reverse psychology. <laughs> I mean, like, my God. Brandon's okay. I, I did, I've I, done this exact thing with my parents before where, like, my mom, there was this guy that I was starting to date, and I thought he was, I liked him. He was fine. But my mom couldn't stand him and she was going off about all these things and then you were obsessed with him obsessed thought of him night and day <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like screw you mom and then as soon as i kind of started to date him i was like i don't really like you okay, that yeah, much not, yeah. but i so i would have been maybe thinking about that a little more strategically but to be honest if i'd be in their shoes and especially to like with what's happened with Michelle in the past, how then she was living with her family when she was sick and going yeah. through all of that, I would be very protective, yeah. honestly, if I were yeah. her parents. And yeah. if you met someone like Brandon who was so warm and so kind and so completely in love with your kid, I'd be like, this also, is our guy. who knows what her ex's personality was like. And I'm sure if there's even one thing that reminds you of them, I wonder if someone knew. I wrote that down. I was like, maybe whether it be looks voice 
facial expressions reminded them of the ex when they saw Nate. Like maybe there was something just that. Even maybe the ex wasn't super interested in being close with the family. So then when they see that trait in Brandon where he wants to be close to them, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is the man. <laughs> this is, this is the dreaming of. <laughs> yeah, I, I. It was quite a night and day difference because these these folks were just singing Brandon's praises. And then we shifted into Nate meeting the family. What is so funny is like Michelle didn't actually seem nervous heading into the day with like I as the viewer was like, oh, I'd be so nervous. She didn't seem that nervous heading into the day with Nate and him meeting her family. I would have been shaking after the meeting with Brandon. Right. I know. I'd be like, how how are they going to react when they literally they were ready to propose? We were going to have like a three way proposal oh, yeah. with Brandon. Oh, yeah. Um, baptize him into the family. He was ready, too. He was ready. Brandon would have gotten on his knees He was and about to get the family crest tattooed on his arm. He was ready, right on the yeah. back. Yeah, Young, yeah, yeah, Written right on his back. Yeah. Um, no, she wasn't nervous. She didn't seem nervous. And Nate seemed ner- nervous. Oh, he definitely seemed nervous. The guy isn't super quick on his feet with words, and he was struggling. It was interesting to think back to Nate in the first half of the season where Nate totally. was kind of like a leader in the, the house. And kind of a smooth talker. Mm-hmm. With Michelle, with the other guys, very like in control and a leader, like big leader energy. And the past two episodes, it's very clear that like that level of vulnerability has put him out of his comfort zone because we're seeing Nate for the first time like not quite knowing what to that's, say that's kind of sweet it's like as his walls are being broken down he's becoming yeah. more vulnerable and not doesn't quite have it all together in the same way which is that's cute and he shared that yeah. later in the episode where he was talking about how scared he is yeah. about losing her and also that he that being vulnerable and opening up is new to him um and so you i mean you could tell like yeah. again he was so nervous and it was like you'd hear him say all these things to michelle before but then all of a sudden now that the pressure has been on the past two weeks it's almost like he's forgotten how to say them and so when he was sitting with the parents the first thing he says to them and i was like nate why are you leading with this <laughs> the first thing he says is he's like well i've never really been in love before and this is like the first time when i'm like oh my god <laughs> no and he was also saying like non things you know where he was just like and this time you know <laughs> yeah getting like, to know her yeah Ah! I just want to be near her and she's amazing and this has been an amazing experience. And they, I was like, what about doing a sonnet like Brandon? <laughs> yeah. What have you prepared? What poem have you uh, <laughs> have you written for us? What was hard though is that they uh, they were already coming into it. Like I mean, they said right before he showed up, like it's hard not to compare to Brandon. Yeah. And then they iced the shit out of him. His dad was, or her dad was just like, oh gosh. Well, they right away said Brandon was warmer initially. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they said that, which warm didn't even seem like the right word though. It didn't, didn't seem to me like, didn't seem to me like he was being cold. No, Nate seems like a warm person. Yeah. He's very like smiley and friendly, but Brandon is like a warm hug. Yeah. Yeah. I true. think Brandon is. Maybe it's the youthfulness, too, that we, like, keep talking about, I guess, more earlier in the uh, season. But, like, that youthful energy. I think Brandon also just has, like, negative negative zero social anxiety. Like, you saw it on the live TV. He was fine chopping it up with Caitlin. He could have taken over the show right then and interviewed (laughs) Nate and Michelle, you know? Like, he was ready to go. like, you want to just bring him out while we're here? (laughs) I'll ask the questions here. I mean, like, he's just quick. Like, he says the right things in the moment. That's true. And I think he doesn't get in his head about that kind of thing. So with the parents, he was just, it's natural. You're quipping, making jokes, and that right away, you know, you're just like, my son. Brandon seems like he's met thousands of parents. Right. And Nate seems like this is the first parent he's ever meeting. That's cute. You know. It's cute, but it wasn't coming across as cute to her parents at all. No. Her mom. <laughs> I mean, he was having a Freudian slip or two. Yeah. That, oh my God, girl. I definitely don't take love uh, lo- seriously. And she was like, you don't take love seriously? I was dripping sweat. 
this entire, like the whole, this whole series, the first half of this episode in general, I was sweating because at first I was sweating because I was like, oh my God, we're, we're in love with Brandon and he's doing so well, but Michelle seems like something's off. And then Nate comes in and he's just not killing it right now. And I'm dripping more sweat. When he had that slip and said, I definitely don't take love seriously. After she says, so you've never been in love before. And he's like, well, uh, uh, I don't, definitely don't take love seriously. And I'm like, oh my God, no, 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 no. no. She like no, no, no. she like laughed in his face at that. Well, and then just after, you know, they're like, he's a really nice guy, I guess, you know. I it, it did bug me that they kept saying, which I told you when you were watching, it did bug me that they kept saying, um, I we want you to like have what we have. I yeah. was kind of like, okay, but Yeah. Like you you said when we were watching it, they're like, Well, you you were like, Well, um, I'm not you. That's my thing is it's like, I mean, love looks so different for so many different people and like relationships that would be better for one person might not be the best for another person. And just like different relationships are just different. Yeah. Like maybe her and mom or dad would have fallen in love with someone else who would have been a totally different kind of love. Mm -hmm. We could have had two love stories. <laughs> <laughs> maybe her mom could have ended up with Brandon and they could have been in a polyamorous relationship and... Honestly, you never know. She's, he said that he fucking missed them. He did. And he really hit that fuck card. <laughs> and then just muted out for 0.2 seconds. And he was like, he's like, oh, God. So sorry. So oh, sorry. Shit. Um, so charming. But yeah, when when uh, Michelle's mom was talking to Nate and, oh, asking if he's ready. Ready sp uh, specifically for an engagement yes, and all that. And he is like. Oh, or she said, I don't think that you're ready. Excuse me. So his mom, so her mom says, I don't think that you're ready. And he's like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden he's backpedaling going like, I really hope that like, that's not what you heard. And I think that's not what I wanted to come across. Yeah. Like I'm ready to get engaged. I'm ready to propose to Michelle. I heard like a little clip of him. Um, I think it was on, it was one of the bachelor podcasts. And he was like, after the fantasy suite, like that date, he was like, I was ready to get engaged to Michelle. Like I was all in. So he was ready. But then he threw out to her, like, she said, like, is Michelle like the one for you? Da, 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 da. And he's like, I don't know if I want to use those cliches. And I just thought it was interesting. I'm like, it's just to me what I felt like I was watching. Number one, he was nervous. But number two, I appreciated the different types of romance with like uh, Brandon versus Nate. Brandon expressing himself in love poems, basically. And Nate loves her. But then he's like, I don't want to necessarily use these cliches. And it's like, maybe his view of love is just more like, I'm in love with her and I want to be with her for the rest of my life, but I'm a child of divorce. So maybe I don't want to say this is the one for me for all, for all eternity. Like, I don't know. It's just the, the complexities of it. I just, I appreciated those but i felt like in this moment <laughs> then we're taken as you're not ready run into the arms of brandon i think if he was just better with words he could have said something like you know what when i hear words yeah. like that i get apprehensive like i come from a broken home mm -hmm. it's something that can be really triggering for me but i'll tell you what she is the one that i will love for the rest of my life if she decides that she wants to be with me she is the one that i will treat like my queen until the day i die and then his mom, her mom would have been like, oh. but, you know, he's not a wordsmith like Brandon and I. <laughs> <laughs> like myself. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I think they're cute together. I'm still a curmudgeon. I'm still not totally sold on Nate, but I'll let it be. He's not a bad. He's not a bad guy. He's everything he's shown is that he's not a bad guy at all. He's a good guy. I think he's a wonderful guy. It's just I'm still not fully in sold love on Brandon. I'm still not fully sold on him for Michelle, but I'll get over it slowly mm. as they prove their love to me over time on Instagram. <laughs> and they must prove it. They must. <laughs> or or else. I will unfollow and I will DM them, you know, just to let you know I am unfollowing. I stopped following you yeah. because I didn't quite I don't see your support, love. I don't support your relationship. I wanted it to be Brandon. Can you imagine <laughs> michelle is just like you're blocked <laughs> excuse me <laughs> good god <laughs> um well so nate walked away and it was this is where my heart hurt for him because he walked away they didn't there wasn't a hug exchange no. they had like kind of a fist bump and it was kind of awkward and then he walked away being like 
I really liked your family. Like, they were really straight shooters. And Michelle's like, they hated you. <laughs> Bro, when she sat down with her mom and just started bawling because her mom was just like, that's going to be a no for me, sweetie. <laughs> She's like, I'm worried for you. I mean, I felt like I knew it was going to be Nate from the beginning of the episode, but that was really the moment when she started tearing up because of her mom not yeah. liking Nate. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, when the tears began to flow, it was like, well, the heart's somewhere and the <laughs> heart is disappointed that mama's heart is not feeling that exact same yeah. way. Yep, 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 yep. Um, well, then Brandon had his one-on-one, and <sighs> the feeling was there the whole time. Becca, we were looking at each other the whole Pained. time. We, we knew. We're like, he's gone. He's Pained. gone. I mean, it was her body language. It was her energy. Mm-hmm. She felt, she seemed anxious. She seemed sad. Mm-hmm. Um, she was turning away from him. I. We were shocked that she said the whole, I, I, I love you thing to him. Yeah, it seemed you thought it seemed forced. It it was not necessarily like I don't know if forced would be the word that I'd use. It was just more like it just felt to me like those that moment where you're trying to convince yourself of something. Yeah, oh yeah. When you're like, I know, me too. And I'm like, I think that's what I was watching. And I'm like, oh my so god, painful. like where you know the person in front of you is wonderful, and you know like it's right, but then there's this other person, and you can't stop thinking about them but then the person in front of you is so wonderful loves you so much and then you have like the massive blessing of your family and so i believe that she was in love with brandon but like i said i think love can have different forms to it so it's just like it seemed obvious to me when they broke up and when they saw each other again that they did love each other yes there there is a deep love there yeah it seemed it always came I don't know the last couple episodes it certainly came across weird though in the parts that we saw on TV uh, the filmed parts didn't it yeah well remember after the <gasps> fantasy suite oh dude what we forgot to talk about was that um, oh actually it was in this evening portion never mind um, she said that he checked in on her before the rose ceremony which and she was like no one else did the rose ceremony prior when we thought that he was going to go home. Yes. And that was really, really interesting yes, to me. She said, okay, yes, 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 yes. So she was saying, what is one of your favorite memories? Mm-hmm. And his memory included her parents, which made me giggle. <laughs> and he said, I really fucking miss them at the end. I'm like, damn, this was real for him. He really loved this them. This was real for him. Um, but yeah, then she said that her favorite memory was when he pulled her aside at the last rose ceremony. So my goodness, the theories about maybe it was going to be Joe and Nate were feeling very real when she said that to me. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Parasocial, my God. Oh, my God. Um, no, that's because we're drinking. We never drink when we podcast, but it's the end of the year. So we're having Captain Morgan and yes. Moss apple juice. Yes, it's delicious. Cheers. Cheers. I just finished mine. Um, <laughs> I have not drank Captain Morgan until like having the most insane hangover of my life oh, as a freshman in college. I haven't had rum. I haven't had hard liquor in I don't know how long. So rum. sorry, broads, if I'm a little off. No, I keep saying like his parents, her parents, know, and like I just apologize. swapping some pronouns it's around. It's the end of the year, she okay? Was, she was talking I'm sorry. To when, she, when she was talking to me. <laughs> what did you say? When she was talking to me. <laughs> They were talking to us through the screen. Listen, um, it was three hours. It's late at night and it's the end of the year. <laughs> and I'm finally feeling better. We just watched three hours of this shit. Um, okay, broads, we have to interrupt ourselves really quickly. Listen, um, I think I speak for all of us when I say optimization is key when working through your to-do list. Uh, if you can order it online or put it onto auto pay or do any kind of automation for anything in life, do it. It just means it's one less thing for you to have to worry about uh, or, you know, one less thing for you to forget about. And that goes for your birth control too. start simplifying with the pill club with the pill club. You can get your birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered right to your door. And it comes in discreet packaging. The pill club carries over 120 brands of FDA approved birth controls. Most are free with insurance, but otherwise prices start as low as $7 a month without insurance. That's really, really good. And if you need any advice, their licensed medical team is just a text away ready to help you. So yeah, you're hearing that right, Broads. Birth control online delivered to you most for free. It literally could not be easier. No more doctor's office visits. uh, No more waiting in line at the pharmacy. The Pill Club is the ideal time-saving solution 
What are you waiting for? And right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash chatty, uh, Pill Club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every Chatty Broads listener who becomes a patient. And um, your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. It's really, really cool. So go to thepillclub.com slash chatty to get your first birth control care package. And you can donate to help more people in need of affordable birth control. Remember, that's thepillclub.com slash chatty. And you do have to use the link to make a donation. Broads, I cannot tell you how many times I've signed up for a free trial because I wanted to try a service or watch a specific movie or get a discount on a product and then forgot to cancel only to be charged for oh months my gosh, on end my afterwards. All because companies are super sneaky, okay? It's time to take back control, cancel those unused or unwanted subscriptions and mm-hmm. get your money back with Truebill. So Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, you don't want, or that you really just forgot you even signed up for so here's how corporations always get me they make it impossible to cancel it's Mm. so freaking annoying so even if you do set a reminder to cancel before your free trial is up or like whenever you need to do it figuring out how to actually cancel can be an impossible task but with just one simple click true bill can cancel all your unwanted subscriptions. It is incredible. Amazing. And on average, Truebill's 2 million users save up to $720 a that year. Adds up. That's a lot. It just takes a matter of minutes for Truebill to go through all of your existing subscriptions and start saving you money. When I made an account, I was actually completely shocked just how much money I was spending each month. Subscriptions I didn't even know I had oh running. My it was gosh. so frustrating. Thank you, Tribble. After going through each account and figuring out what I actually used and what I could do without, Tribble helped me get out of three memberships I completely forgot about. Wow. Um, and I saved 25 bucks a month now. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash chatty. So go right now. Truebill.com slash chatty. It could save you literally thousands a year. Truebill.com slash chatty. When, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, when they were having, uh, that so you do think he was, she was going to send him home. Part of me thinks so. But you know, he said like, I'm putting it all out there for her. He, what did he say? Is this like a, is, is this like a dream, something I'm dreaming up? But I remember him, him saying something like when he, when he explained, like, I'm going to shoot my shot for her because like this is the only chance I get basically but I mean but that was but that was the moment she was talking about where it was like and the guys were mad but he pulled her aside and it's like hey listen I just want to let you know that I am here for you I support whatever decision you make like well and it seemed like he actually though inquired like how are you doing since she we saw her tears streaming down her face Mm -hmm. so it Mm -hmm. seemed like it was an actual legit check in like are you Mm -hmm. okay and that's who Brandon is we love him. But that that then to her, it meant so much. And so maybe she was going to pick him and uh, and Nate, but definitely made me think, oh, that's your mm-hmm. favorite memory. Maybe you were going to go with Joe. And maybe because let's let's not forget that morning when she woke up with Joe, she seemed very happy. And the wake up with Brandon seemed a little <laughs> off, but OK once the food fight started. And speaking of the food oh fight. Oh, my God. Sweet Brandon. Uh, God, we were cringing out. so hard we when we saw this bag. So we were so scared. Because it was just like, we love Brandon so much, but like you could just tell that she just, it wasn't there. And so then when he he was like lighting the candles and the drinks and being so romantic, and then he pulls out the gift and I'm like, my God, what is he about to present her with? Um, but he gave her his sweatshirt that he was wearing when they woke up. And I thought that, that was very sweet because Lord knows I love to wear my partner's sweatshirt and sniff it. Okay, although what was funny is that everyone in the comments was roasted him being like, he always talks like he's a junior high or high schooler doting over this girl. And then he gave her his sweatshirt. <laughs> his it stupid is, ass Hanes sweatshirt. It is very high school, but I still sweet. like it. I love when a guy offers me his jacket or like, you know, wants to let me borrow his flannel. It's like- Happens all the time because I live with him and his closet's right next to mine, but- But I'm also like, are we not- like, are we forgetting the uh, the moment where Joe and her had like a prom? I mean, like, come on, it's for real. For when, yeah, exactly. When they were in their hometown, and Joe took her back to his high school. Yeah, you guys are really gonna. Mm, so Brandon, he's just stop he's with just... the Brandon heat now. 
please he's tears hurt streaming enough. down my face please he's hurt enough what is that like copy paste thing where it's like a crying vomiting like pulling out my hair what is it like rolling around the floor crying vomiting <laughs> crying puking something <laughs> that's me please stop with the Brandon hate can't take it uh, <sighs> um but that was actually cute I thought it was very very sweet but she was just she was just there was anxiety written all over her. And so I I then, I adore Brandon, but then I felt anxious for her because I was like, oh my anxious. God. And then when she said that I'm in love with you, I was like, I believe it, but I also feel like this feels like you're trying to convince yourself yeah. and maybe it's not the type of love that you're looking for, but you do love yeah. him. And maybe he's maybe more like a, a, a friend love, like a support system love more than a romantic love. Even though, I mean, when they make out, it definitely feels passionate. But I don't know. Yeah, it it did seem passionate. But uh, then at times it seemed like she was pulling back, too. I don't know if I was overanalyzing. She was thinking of Nate. <sighs> well, speaking of Nate. Speaking of Nate. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, I have words about this date. So on the flip side. This date really pissed me off. And we, <laughs> and we were, Becca and I were like we had a sharp eye on Michelle's facial expressions oh, man. because of her date with Brandon. We're like, she seems off. She still seems off. Is it Joe? So we're like, okay, if she seems off during Nate's date, then perhaps there's something else. She's tired. Maybe she doesn't know if she wants to get engaged okay. or whatever. But the second the she saw was Nate, high. she was beaming. Yeah. She was wearing white. Like it was, she was ready to get married right then and there. The energy was high. Yes. Then they went to this beachy area where there was a man, shaman. All I was thinking about was the fact that Thomas was in the audience watching and remember his reaction. That was amazing. That made me love Thomas so much. Yes, when he saw Kenny and Mari He's with like, their shaman experience and he was like, you guys need, you don't understand how special and beautiful and bonding this they is. They are so lucky. They are so lucky. And all I was thinking about was <laughs> Thomas sitting next to Becca being like, like, damn it. He's like, that is so beautiful. This is, this, this, we need to have He's this experience. Like, like, we need to go. We need to go back. Like, look at them. Look at this experience that they're having. Yeah. Well, so she took it all seriously and said some cute words. And then it was Nate's turn. And the shaman wasn't having it. And neither was no. Michelle. You could see it on her face. No, Michelle was not playing. And the shaman was like, you know, there seems to be some blockages. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, you know, try clearing it. And then Nate tried. Oh, but it really pissed me off because... I just I have a personal thing with this with my own partner and past partners. <laughs> You're like it's not personal for me. It's personal. <laughs> no, him giggling and just being like, "Oh, I'm clearing out the angry, you know, whatever, fear, whatever." He's like, "Is that good enough?" <laughs> and she was just sitting there like, <laughs> "When he said, is that good enough?" I well, I was not I was not, not happy impressed. about that. Also, I feel like producers like really screwed him and they gave him coals or incense or whatever that had water on it because every time the shaman would light it, yeah, I didn't know what was going it on would there. die and he kept being like, oh, sorry, wait, sorry, man. Every time he was about to hey, say man, something and I was like, producers are trying to fuck with this man and then with Michelle and be like, look, symbolically, he's not ready. The coals of, the coals of burning love are dying They're out. They're dying. Look at them. He can't even keep them lit for two seconds. <laughs> Pay attention. I felt like it was... Passion is temporary. <laughs> Brandon, as you The flame of friendship burns forever. But then, okay, after the giggly shit, which I told Jess, I was like, I bet they're going to sit down and have like a conversation. He's going to be vulnerable. And he did. He told her that he was afraid, you know? And and it, it was very real. Yeah, and and I'm glad he did too, for their sake. Because like you said, Michelle was not happy. And I was like, this may, this may turn quickly because she already has her parents... In her ear now being like, Brandon is our forever and you better choose him and Nate is not ready. And then they're having this yeah. date where they're supposed to be opening up and Nate is like, his coals can't stay lit. He's asking her if it's good enough. And I'm like, ooh, we're on some rocky ground right now. Um, but he gave her what she needed. Yeah, It wasn't, she didn't need much. I'll say that. No, because she's in love with him. And it was, it's like, just, just let me know, like, give me a sense of semblance with what's, what, what are you feeling right now? Like why? And I would be curious too, if I was Michelle, I'd be feeling nervous because uh, at least what we've seen from Nate before, he wasn't this nervous guy. So if I was Michelle, I'd be like, why all of a sudden do you have a shift of energy? Yeah. Because you seem like 
when you and I are talking and I'm trying to get you to explain how you feel, you're sidestepping That's words totally real, and you're yeah. not being very direct with me. And like two weeks ago, you were very direct yeah. and our communication was good. Getting cold feet. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I, I did still think it was funny though. Cause then later in the night, you know, he was like, I opened up to you today earlier today in like a way you've never seen before. And I was kind of like, I was like, right. it wasn't that intense. <laughs> so this is deep as you guys are gone. Okay. Noted. Uh, but I, I mean, it got to me, it got intense, yes. especially when, you know, she was like, I love you. And he was like, I love you. Yes. They like yes. looked into each other's eyes. It felt intense. It it did. And then he told her that he is absolutely ready to propose. Yeah. Get down on a knee. And he gave her that confidence yeah. that he was there. Because I don't think he had said directly right. at that point, like, I want to propose to you at the end of That's this. what I was asking before that to Jess. I was like, yeah. have we heard him confirm that he's down to get engaged? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, I mean, he told the truth, obviously. Look yes, at them he now. Did. Yes, he did. But it wasn't the end of the night yet. No, because right after we hear Michelle say, my heart is telling me that this is my person in reference to Nate. Dun, dun, dun. There is a letter on the bed. The voiceover romantic letter of the century. Jess, why don't you take it away? Because you had some strong feelings about this letter. Well, first of all, I did see a meme on Instagram <laughs> of a guy <laughs> in, a, in a recording booth <laughs> that said <laughs> Brandon recording <laughs> for this show the voiceover for the letter because <laughs> I was just picturing Brandon like I was really picturing him writing it and like crying over the letter and then in reality he's probably just in like a vocal booth just like so you want another take of this okay cool Michelle, my heart is exploding with my love for you. <laughs> I actually wondered about that too. And then I was like, oh, they probably but had But the him. fact that they used his voice, it didn't get, you saw my, I had goosebumps all over my body. I, ugh. It was something straight out of a movie. It was, I told Becca, it was the most beautiful letter I've heard on the show. And if you want to disagree, you can fight me because that was... There was nothing corny or cheesy about that. I didn't think so either. I thought it was beautiful. It was beautiful and it was perfect. It wasn't what like was the some... line you liked. He said, Michelle, follow your heart because I followed mine and it led me to you. Ah! <laughs> it was so beautiful. And then he also said in it, he um he did like a triplet, and I don't remember the uh, the first line, <laughs> but he said I see you. I will always see you. And he said another one right before yeah. that. And let me he I see your parents. I will always see your parents. <laughs> <laughs> but he listens to her. Yeah. Like that was one of the things that she's talked about, like not feeling seen. And his letter really made sure she knew that he sees her and that he's there for her, regardless of what happens. Also, one cannot underestimate the power of a man who is putting in so much effort to show you intentional work to show you that you are cared for gifts notes yeah. words yeah. like just showing up you know yeah listen i don't know when you see someone who without request is doing that all i think about is like yeah of course it's not gonna be like that forever but no. that's also the type of person that will probably continue to do that throughout he's your life th he's together. demonstrating that he's thinking of you yes. and not also in not in love bomby ways where it's like i'm gonna you know I'm going to buy you this and I'm going to do this with champagne. No, it was always very like thoughtful and pointed. He's always her. he's always there for her and he's letting her know that. And then also when she doesn't choose him, he's okay with that too because it's true love. And he wants what's best for her. End scene. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of my dissertation. This is now called the Chatty Broads Brandon podcast. Brandon will be the our chatty new Brandon co-host. He podcast. doesn't know it yet. He would be an amazing podcast co-host. He really would be. He's got the gift of gab, baby. Mm -hmm. He can was we, doing that interviewing up there. Please get him on. If Nick Vial has him on and we don't, I'll sue. Wait, hold on. I want to check quick to see if he's on Nick's podcast tonight. <sighs> he has Brandon. Okay, well, is. Jess in just studio. confirmed it that he's in the fucking studio right now. <sighs> I'm suing for emotional damages. <laughs> Brandon, why aren't you in between us right now? In betwixt <laughs> us? 
<laughs> why your legs intertwined with us on this beautiful blue couch, Brandon? <laughs> Anywho. Anyway, um, so, yeah. So, should we talk about the part where she dashed his heart into the beach rocks? Oh my God. Well, first of all, we have to acknowledge the fact that Neil Lane is back, baby. Neil Lane's back. Neil Lane He's is back, back and bigger than ever before <laughs> he, after consuming some more souls. Listen, he had his earpiece in, and the moment that Nate walked up to look at those rings, he was like, so question, son, have you ever been in love before? <laughs> <laughs> you ever shot for one of these bad boys? Oh, no, why? Because you've never loved a woman? <laughs> You want to take a look at my diamonds? Have you ever used one of these before? They can be touchy. They can be <laughs> testy. <laughs> Powerful thing. Pick the right one. Or else. Cock. <laughs> Off with your hand. He picked a nice ring. I have he to really say did. Too. I thought it was. He really did. He really did. And Sunny. I think it says a lot about when a man picks nice jewelry. <laughs> because your girl has gotten some things that are horrible before. Never from my husband. Never. Oh, because he knows me, and I think that's important. What to about know. your wedding ring? My that's the really the only <laughs> thing. <laughs> that was the only thing. But you know why? You know why? Mm. Because he let his dad have too much of a say in it. See, Michelle made the right choice by not having her dad have too much of a say in that that's, relationship. That's the thing. His dad went with him to. Because his dad had the relationship with the jeweler and his dad was like, I think you should do this and da 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 da, da. And Evan listened. And I, I love my ring, okay, because it's from Evan, but it wouldn't have been the one I would have chosen. And Evan knew that. But he listened to his father. Why don't you use the diamonds and get it reset? I've thought about it. Like, do it, girl. I've thought about it. Do <laughs> Spoil it. Spoil yourself. Go crazy, you know? Okay, anyway, sorry. Yeah, they picked out rings. Um, and now I will tell you this, Nate was talking more about the ring shape representing, uh, their love than he talked about their love in general, which was interesting for me. Maybe he has a career as a jeweler. Maybe he does, but he picked out a beautiful pear shaped diamond, I believe. Um, and then it was Brandon's turn and Brandon's like, there's not a nervous bone in my body. He had zero nerves. He was like, I'm ready to propose to my wife. I have the ticket. We are going to take a quick little trip. Producers say no. We're going to do it anyways because our love is that strong. Um, and then his heart was absolutely smashed into millions of pieces because after walking down those treacherous stairs. Mm -hmm. You were really worried for everyone. I was so concerned about those <laughs> stairs. <laughs> they looked like they were going to crumble. They were very steep and there was no railing. Mm -hmm. And I really... I struggle with my depth perception, so I knew it would have been a it would have been a bad news. It would have been a lawsuit. Yeah, it would have been a lawsuit to ABC. Yeah, they were really testing that. <laughs> um, but first of all, do they do you think they make the lead stay silent before so that the person the contestant can like basically propose? When you said that when we were watching, because like obviously I don't think they can make the lead do anything, but it is interesting to note when leads will literally sometimes i think i think it was caitlin didn't she didn't nick get down on one knee or something before she stopped him he was, was like about he to. was like mid knee I, I won't forget that but i'll never um, forget that devastating for him um but i but then there are other leads who will break up with the person before even the rose ceremony so yeah. it's got to be up to their discretion but or maybe they're just more easily manipulated. Producers are like, let him say his piece. Or maybe some of them want to hear it. True. They're like halfway in between and they're like, I don't know. I mean, it seemed like Michelle had a hard time saying goodbye too. And it's sort of like, you know, maybe in her heart of hearts, she's like, I won't know until I see them. Well, come down. I don't know if she heard anything he said. Because. We sure didn't. The thunderous waves the tsunamis in the background i saw robert mills post and he's like sorry everyone we turned up the audio as loud as we could <laughs> i'm like maybe a different location who scouted this come on they better be out of a job fire, fire. <laughs> because it was i, I we could not becky and i were had our ears pushed against the television i was like i can't hear the anything only right thing now i could think is like maybe the tide was lower in the sea when they were scouting the locations and the sea was much less tumultuous that was the only thing i could think of because that was Dude, 
and to they and they didn't put subtitles on the show. Come on, guys, you gotta know. You gotta we, know when you're watching it back before you put it out that no one can hear it. No one. <laughs> I was literally trying to read their lips. Yeah, it was really bad. But what I what I what you could, gathered what I could gather what was happening is he was saying beautiful things to her, and then she shuts it down. Um, and he is next level devastated. Like he you can is see it all over his face. He it, his face was like. It was, was about like, to pop a vein trying to hold back tears. His face literally looked like he was in physical pain. Like his heart was bursting in his, he, in his he chest. He was trying to stop himself from just tears streaming, like just sobbing, sobbing. And as he's, as the tears are welling up and he's trying to hold back everything, oh my God. he tells her that she was worth every second. And off the cuff, that's what he says. In the moment of shock, he says later after the final rose that he was like, I was completely shocked. I thought it was going to be me. But he did Until, say. Until, yep, and Becca called it. He's like, she's like, he knows when he was walking up. Granted, it was all over her fucking yeah. face. But he said, he's like, the second I saw your eyes, I knew that it wasn't it. And yet he still, he said everything he needed to say and wanted to say. And and you know what he said when he got to the top of those treacherous stairs? You mean after he held her face and told her that like she was always going to mean so much to him, and and, and they told okay. them they told each other that they love each other, that he that they love each other, and then they had that moment where he was like, "I hate goodbyes," and she's like, "I do too," and then they separated, and he did the look over the shoulder. What did he say? Becca? We were crying. We, we were, were crying. We were totally crying. He said. I would go chase after her, but I don't think it was a mistake. I think she followed her heart, and there's nothing you can really do about that. That's all you need to know about this man and his character. A man respecting boundaries. And respecting her. Yes. Being like, respecting, yeah. Even in the face of devastation and heartbreak. Utter heartbreak. He was bawling once he got to the top, like sobbing. Like his snot, snot was coming out of his nose, like bawling, crying. And in the midst of all of that, there was no, she made me feel like, or da 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 da. It was or just like, like, or even, or even just like, I don't know. I just can't help but think like it was supposed to be me. None of that. Just no. literally like, I think she followed her heart and I, there's, that's out of my control. There's not a better response. Not a better response. Not a better response. No. Also, before I forget, can we talk about real quick how Caitlin violated his privacy by taking a <laughs> photo of this man, a stalker photo from her to hotel room? Even though I am so glad she did because then America saw it was like, look at this. Who He had no idea that the cameras I just were on see him. her on her balcony like this, though. <laughs> just like, oh, my God. Zooming. Just like, oh, my God. That poor guy. Dude, and the sun setting, and he is on a lone log, contemplating. And then when she asked him about it, and he was like, "Perfect answer once again." Didn't even know this photo answer. was going to be thrown up there. No idea, completely thrown off. And then he goes, "Isn't that just beauty in the struggle?" And he's like, "I was there, and I was hurting, and it was just like God was like, look at this beautiful, look at how sunset. beautiful. Like you're going to be okay." I'm like, my God. <laughs> Are you Nicholas Sparks? <laughs> That's what I felt like. I'm like, this is this man is a romance novel author, and we just don't know. He has a different pen name. Straight up. Make him the bachelor. Now! Make him the bachelor now. Make him the bachelor now. Well, Nate then arrives um looking absolutely gorgeous. And he doesn't give Brandon speech, but you know what? He he shows Michelle his heart and they get engaged. They get engaged. And they're still together now. We didn't see any um, happy couple footage, which I feel like we normally get to see. And I kind of enjoy seeing like little photos oh, and I videos. Oh, I know. I like that. Seeing them visit each other. I mean, <clears throat> what they also didn't do, which I feel like they do most of the time, is during After the Final Rose, they kind of do this like bring out, um, bring out the lead and then bring out the uh, second mm. contestant and then are like, are they oh still God. together? Oh, my God. Wait. We didn't even see, we didn't see Joe at all. We didn't <gasps> see her. 
Oh my God, Joe. We didn't see him because he wasn't at Mentel all or after the final roast. So we never saw her oh my gosh, interact Joe. with him. <gasps> I feel bad. I forgot about him. He didn't have his time. He didn't have his moment. But also I wanted to see their interaction because the last we saw of them was post fantasy suites. Very true. They must have just not had time in the scheduling, but I wanted to see that. I completely forgot. Me completely too. forgot. Well, I was just surprised in general that like they they brought Brandon out right away and then had Michelle come out and then they're like it was very clear when Michelle was talking to Brandon that yes indeed I'm still with Nate. And they didn't leave us questioning. I feel like normally they're like, are they still together? There wasn't. And I feel like I wasn't seeing tons of um, spoilers or anything either. So it's not like every I I don't think it was like everyone knew what was going to happen. Right. I don't know. I'm just surprised. I felt like they, they, they always kind of lead up into are they together and it was like obviously they're together and and i know i know i know there was none of that they're like oh come on come on right out yeah they were so giggly and cute they listen the two of them are very very much in love and it's very obvious and they were matching even though brandon was also wearing burgundy honestly his shade matched better than I know. Then Nate's did, which just is just a little bit. <laughs> but when when Nate was describing how Michelle's like a song that you just keep listening to, and she was like, he's even more vulnerable than me. And then we see Michelle's parents are there and they say they love Nate. Brandon cut to Brandon in the back, devastated that they dare, dare speak of Nate this way when Brandon is in the, still in the building. Cut to Nate and Michelle's moms, like no. practically conjoined at the hip at this point. Oh, they were they were legit holding hands. <sighs> they loved each other so much. And Brandon's like, you all move on quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Last I recall, you <laughs> were I was singing calling, my praises. You were hitting me up for golf, Mr. Young. Last time that I remember, isn't it, Mrs. Young? You were FaceTiming me (laughs) relentlessly, and I recall hearing you all saying you wanted to adopt me. What about now? (laughs) Am I still your family? Am I still welcomed in? No. Oh, how the tables turn! Interesting. Very interesting. (laughs) Oh my God. Let's talk about how when he was he came out, and when he was talking to Michelle, um, Caitlin had to cut him off. Oh yeah, I think they were just running out of time. They had the whole. They, they had to do the the Clayton psychological torture bit, so and they had to be keep honest, things moving. Brandon was he was on he, he was, was on waxing a waxing poetic. He was waxing. I was poetic. eating it up. Obviously, I, I was eating up every second. I could listen to that man talk I for forever. Hear her. I want. I did want to no. hear. I wish that. Well, they they're on time straight, but I wish it could have. Caitlin could have been like. And I'm sorry, Brandon, but like I, we, I do, we do want to hear from Michelle first before we like move on. And I yeah, like I mean, she talked a she little bit, not much, but it was just very clear in their conversation that she was like, "I am with Nate, and I'm in love with Nate, and I am happy with the decision that I made." Yeah, and he wasn't really like pushing that; he was just trying to. No, Brandon. What was even so was respectful. he saying in all of that anyway? I think he just needed to let it off his <laughs> chest a little bit. He was just like, hey, yes, it hurt me when this happened, but I also only saw my side of the story. And now that I've seen your guys' story together, I totally understand and I support you. But it did hurt, but I get it. <laughs> but it did hurt and I understand. But yeah, I was hurting, but I'm but so I happy for you. you. Love you. Know? you. Yeah. But yeah, I'm he in pain. Just, he needed to let her know that he was in pain, but that he also supports her and respects well, her. And Caitlin was like, thank you, whatever, whatever. And he literally goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was pissed like he forgot she was there he forgot he was on tv and he was just like yeah no he, he literally like, he was like i'm kay. talking to my ex right now <laughs> like me. i don't see the cameras he's like, what and, are you and when they when they panned out he was still talking to michelle he's like i'm gonna hold up i'm gonna yeah. finish my thought <laughs> one moment please i need to finish what i was saying i had this planned out caitlin's <laughs> caitlin's like never seen the best. caitlin's like dude <laughs> I have to cut to commercial break. Okay? <laughs> You've been talking for an hour and a half. Literally. We all love you, but it's a little this long. This is live. <laughs> this is live. And I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to keep my job. <laughs> I'm trying to do this by myself right now. Oh my God. Also, <laughs> cut to Polly, which can you. Okay, hold on. Becca. Explain to all of us who Polly is. Okay, Polly's role when I was on the show, granted, he sort of was like a mascot then too. Uh huh. But Polly, what he did when I was on the show is he would tell us where to stand on the risers during the rose ceremonies and okay. would generally direct those types of things. He he was sort of like the the crew manager where he'd sure. be like, 
ladies, you all need to walk over here. Right. You need to stand here. Well, tonight, Polly said, bitches, step aside because this is my moment. There's no business Business like show business. He got on his costume. He was in character. He was licking ice cold. This was... (laughs) Polly gave us every holiday movie. He served every holiday movie up to us on a silver platter. And he did it oily. Oh, and he loved it. He slurped up that spaghetti with maple syrup like he was Buddy the Elf. <laughs> he stuck his tongue to that frozen pole. He was an audience member. He was Santa. He held the mistletoe so Joe and Serena could kiss. He did it all. And he brought the gingerbread house with the big check. <laughs> Their faces when they like got that, they were just like... That, like that oh, was oh. killing me when, Kate, when Caitlin was like... We have a gift for, or we have something for you guys. And they weren't like, it wasn't processing that like this was a a gift other than the gingerbread house. And they were like, how do we react? This is live TV. They were like, thank you so much. Yes, we were just talking about zillowing homes together. (laughs) And um, this is a nice gingerbread house. (laughs) She's like, no, open it. Open it. It's a check. (laughs) It's a check. They're paying you more. I mean, I Um, couldn't believe it though. They were like, we're getting a home. We're going to get... I mean, we got the date. I was so so happy for them. When did her season wrap? Do we know? Mm. I mean, I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere. Yeah, let me see. Because I'm curious. I'm just like, how long have they been together since the end of the season? That's what I'm really wondering. You know, me investigating whether I think this is real or not. If they've really had time to make these kinds of decisions. <laughs> Granted, they were just on a show in which they got engaged in eight weeks. However, I will withhold my skepticism. (laughs) Michelle's was filmed in July 2021. So it started in July 2021, we think. Yeah. Okay, so that probably ended in September. All right. So, yeah, okay, that's typical. It's been like three months probably. Yeah. We've had a good amount of time together. Mm, interesting. Well, they have their down payment for their first home. And I literally, I'm so happy for them. But all I could think about was like the fact that Taisha didn't even get an after the final oh, rose. Unreal. Thank you for reminding me of that because I completely forgot. And I, they're like, what's with this check? <laughs> like, I didn't even get to have a moment with my fiance on national television where like people could see our love together. And, you know, the Instagram following could boost a little bit. You're giving them a check, too, for a down payment on a house? My lord. There's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. Well, then, after that occurred, we then had the shaming of Clayton, the public mockery of Clayton. (laughs) Now, Becca, you Mm. brought up something that I found to be Mm. very true and interesting, was the order in which the uh, After the Final Rose aired, where we had absolutely devastating Brandon moments right into Michelle and Nate. Not an interview alone with Michelle. Not a Clayton moment in between. Just heartbreak of that Brandon. That was a lot. Directly. We felt like that was aggressive. It was a little bit of a roller coaster. I felt like we we didn't let it settle so that then our love could build no, back no, no, up. No, 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 no. Instead, I was like sitting like this. We just felt kind of bad for Brandon the whole time then. Even though their love is so beautiful. It was just, they were, they were the whiplash. It was too much. A lot. Yeah. But then I will also say, so we were talking about that as the show was airing. Yes. But then after seeing the public mockery of Clayton, I got why they didn't put that in the middle. No, that would have just been like, I'm ready to, yeah. I'm yeah, ready. yeah. It, it, it would have been all over for me. I'm like, I can't finish watching this episode because this is the meanest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, well, we did it. That's Michelle's season. That's a wrap, That's Michelle. folks. Michelle. And you know what? It was a very, very good season. Some of the most wonderful men we've seen. I hope that Michelle and Nate are very happy together. He said he's moving to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And um, I hope that Brandon finds his true love or slides into one of our DMs. Yeah. I hope he comes on our show. Yeah, me too. Probably I won't really... happen, but I would like that. Yeah, I I doubt that that's going <laughs> to happen. <laughs> and I also would like to send blessings to Clayton as he experiences what looks to be like quite a wild season and apparently a lot of Twitter backlash. <sighs> um, but speaking of Clayton's season, we have been telling you all that we had a very big announcement coming up. 
And it is time to reveal this announcement. Our big announcement is we will not be recapping Clayton's season of The Bachelor. They could barely say it. <laughs> Happy holidays! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Enjoy that gift. <laughs> Happy New Year! But for real, we're gonna um, we yeah we will not be recapping Clayton's season. We will be discussing everything, uh, our plans, our feelings, our reasons. Yeah, we will be telling all of that you, in the new year. Um, we will be telling you why and um, what will be happening moving forward. Yeah. Um, there's some tea to spill and there's also, I know broads don't, don't hate us. I know this is right before the holidays and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Thanks for this gift. Uh, we have some big surprises in store for you. So you're going to have to wait to find out. <laughs> I know this, what a tease. This is so mean right before the holidays. Um, you're going to have to wait to find out all of the information regarding what we are talking about and you can find out about it. On January 6th. Next year. Next year, January 6th, Thursday, uh, in two weeks, we will be dropping an episode and we will be detailing everything and um, what is going on. Yeah. I have butterflies. So until January 6th, you can continue to uh, tune in to the episodes we will be dropping. And remember, let us know. Do you want to hear about our past relationships again? Do you want to hear... <laughs> Let us know in the comments about if you want to hear about our relationships or the other. Uh, I'm sure all favorites. the comments won't be talking about us not recapping Clayton's season. No, not at but all. we have explanations. So you'll hear all about it. You know, you'll hear all about, all about it soon. And happy holidays and uh, happy I new have, year. I have, See butterf then. I have butterflies. I have butterflies. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, broads. Uh, we love you all. Chat soon. Chat soon.